Hello, my name is Dirk Larson, and I'm a biostatistician at the Mayo Clinic. Today, I will be talking about immortal time bias. In joint arthroplasty research, many endpoints are measured as time to event outcomes. Patients are followed after surgery, and the outcomes occur over time during the follow-up period. These kinds of outcomes are analyzed using survivorship methodology, such as Kaplan-Meier and Cox regression methods. In this setting, immortal time bias can arise when comparison groups are defined based on future knowledge. The term immortal time applies to a period of time between the beginning of the study and last follow-up in which neither death nor the study outcome can occur. This happens when the subjects are divided into comparison groups based on a risk factor that is unknown at study entry, but is identified at a later point during follow-up. In this situation, individuals in the group defined after the time delay have a period of immortality in which, by definition, the study outcome cannot occur. This is because the subjects had to, one, survive and be followed long enough to experience the exposure, or in other words, be identified with the risk factor, and two, not experience the study outcome or other precluding event prior to experiencing the exposure. Here are some examples of immortal time in orthopedic research. Comparison of mortality in patients who underwent multiple revision surgeries. The period between the first and second revision surgery is immortal time because the patient must remain alive and under active follow-up after the initial revision surgery in order to subsequently receive the second revision surgery. Comparison of early versus delayed surgery in patients with anterior cruciate ligament tears. Patients must remain alive, be free of other knee surgeries, and not be lost to follow-up to be in the delayed reconstruction group. Comparison of patients who underwent manipulation under anesthesia, or MUA, following primary knee arthroplasty to patients who underwent primary knee arthroplasty with no subsequent MUA. Patients must remain alive, be free of revision surgery, and not be lost to follow-up prior to undergoing MUA. This diagram illustrates this concept. The lines represent a cohort of patients that has been divided into two subgroups based on whether they were identified with a risk factor sometime after the start of study follow-up. The top line shows patients that were not identified with a risk factor during the follow-up. We will call this the unexposed group. The bottom line represents patients that experienced an exposure or risk factor sometime during follow-up. We will refer to this subset as the exposed group. For the exposed group, the period of time between the beginning of follow-up and the study outcome or last follow-up is considered immortal time. This is because patients have to survive and be followed long enough to experience the exposure. Also, patients cannot experience the study outcome during the time between the beginning and end of follow-up. In other words, any patient that experiences the study outcome prior to the exposure is by definition included in the unexposed group. This is because at the time of the outcome event, they are still unexposed. The result of including this immortal time in the calculation of the event rates for the exposed group is that the true outcome rate is underestimated because these patients are granted this follow-up time without the possibility of the study outcome occurring. Some attempt to eliminate this bias by simply excluding the immortal time. This situation is shown in this diagram. Here the time between the beginning of study follow-up and the identification of the risk factor, or exposure, is ignored and follow-up is started from the time of the exposure. The problem here is that the follow-up for these exposed patients starts much later than for the unexposed patients, and the time period following the initial surgery is unaccounted for. In order to make a fair, unbiased comparison, the immortal time period must be properly included. This figure shows the correct assignment of the exposure time. Here we see that for the group with a time-delayed exposure, the follow-up time must be split between the unexposed and exposed groups. Specifically, follow-up time from study entry to the point of exposure should be assigned to the unexposed group. Only follow-up time from the point of exposure to the study outcome or last follow-up should be assigned to the exposed group. Here's an example. The aim of the analysis in this example 
is to compare patient survival after total hip arthroplasty, or THA, among patients with unilateral versus staged bilateral surgery. The cohort includes 1,500 patients who had surgery on one hip only and 400 patients who had surgery on both hips. The outcome is patient survival, and patients are followed from the date of surgery to death, last follow-up, or the end of the study. The data are analyzed using Kaplan-Meier estimation. This figure shows the Kaplan-Meier curves for the unilateral and staged bilateral groups. With a follow-up starting on the date of surgery for the unilateral group and the date of the first surgery for the bilateral group. Within the staged bilateral group, the time between the initial surgery and the second surgery is immortal time. This is because these patients had to survive and be followed long enough to have the second surgery. In this inappropriate inclusion of immortal time, the bias favors the patients in the bilateral surgery group. The 15-year survival rate is 47% among patients who underwent only one surgery, compared to 74% among patients who underwent bilateral surgeries. When this data is analyzed correctly, the follow-up for those with staged bilateral procedures is allocated differently. The time from the initial surgery to the second surgery is included with the unilateral group, whereas the time from the second surgery to death or last follow-up is assigned to the bilateral group. When the follow-up time is correctly allocated in this manner, the results change dramatically. The resulting survival rates are much closer. The 15-year survival rate has increased to 50% among the unilateral patients and has decreased to 56% among patients with bilateral surgeries. Performing the analysis correctly has effectively removed the immortal time bias and resulted in more accurate estimates of the true survival rate. Here are some guidelines to recognize immortal time bias. Examine the study inclusion exclusion criteria. If patients are excluded based on a minimum length of follow-up and survivorship methods are used for analysis, there is likely an immortal time bias issue. Determine how the risk group is defined. Is the exposure known a study baseline, or did it occur at some point during follow-up? If the latter, then immortal time likely exists. If immortal time exists and the analysis involves survivorship methods, allocate the follow-up time for the time delay exposure group correctly. After organizing the data properly, use appropriate analysis techniques such as Kaplan-Meier estimation and Cox regression with time-dependent covariates.